Hey, how's it going folks? Got a good one for you today. Today we're going to talk about how the clutch system on your car works, but not only that, we're also gonna go over how you can diagnose issues with your clutch system. So next time you have a clutch issue and take your car to the mechanic shop, this doesn't happen to you. Yep, I can hear it. You gotta hear the muffler bearing there. Yep, and you got a check engine light. That's always a slipping clutch. So a muffler bearing and a slipping clutch for you. And I just need your signature at the end of this repair order, right? Right here, right here. All right, so the job of your clutch system is to transfer the power that's coming from your engine through the back end of your crankshaft to the input shaft of your transmission. Now this is obviously an automatic transmission, but we're just gonna use this for demonstration purposes. And at the same time, your clutch system needs to allow for disengagement between the two so that you can put your car in neutral, and more importantly, be able to shift between gears. And the first component that allows this to happen is going to be a flywheel made for a manual transmission that comes with a friction surface like this. And your flywheel is bolted to your crankshaft like this and it turns with the crankshaft at all times, obviously. And it also comes like this around the edges with these teeth, which are there so that they can engage the gear inside your starter motor. So basically when you're cranking the engine, your starter engages your flywheel, which in turn turns your crankshaft, which starts moving the pistons up and down and starts opening and closing the valves. But more importantly, this is when your crankshaft position sensor starts creating a crank signal, and that's what your PCM uses to turn the fuel injectors on and off and get your engine going. But I digest, let's get back to how the clutch system on your car works. All right, so for the rest of this demonstration, we'll move up here. Just make believe that there's a crankshaft at the back of this and this is attached to our crankshaft. All right, next up, your clutch disc. Which is actually the only component of your clutch system that's directly connected to the input shaft of your transmission through the splines that you see here. So here's your flywheel. Your clutch disc goes on like this with the friction surface of your clutch disc and flywheel mating like this. And then the input shaft of your transmission, which is basically the same size as this clutch alignment tool, goes through your clutch disc like this. And next, here comes the pressure plate. It's got these fingers on one end, and then this friction surface again on the inside. And your pressure plate goes on like this. It basically squeezes the friction surface on your clutch disc between the friction surface of the flywheel and its own friction surface, and it bolts on to your flywheel through these holes on the flywheel and these holes on the pressure plate. All right, so basically under normal operating circumstances and your transmission in neutral and your foot not on the clutch pedal, your pressure plate is squeezing your clutch disc into your flywheel and everybody is spinning together with your crankshaft. Now since your transmission is in neutral and no gear is selected, your input shaft is also spinning with your clutch disc. But again, since no gears are selected, this input shaft is basically freewheeling inside your transmission and none of the gears are lining up and your output shaft therefore is not spinning. Now that's great, but in order to be able to shift gears, we need to find a way to disengage our clutch so that the full force or the full torque of our crankshaft is not continuously going through our input shaft. And that's where your clutch pedal, crotch pedal, God damn it. And that's where your clutch pedal, your clutch master cylinder, and your clutch slave cylinder, which is inside the bail housing on this car, and the fingers on your pressure plate come into play. See, when you depress the crutch, crutch pedal, god damn it, I'm gonna call it the crutch pedal. See, when you depress the clutch pedal on your car, you push in the connecting rod at the back end of your clutch pedal assembly, which goes through the firewall into your clutch master cylinder and squeezes the hydraulic fluid that's in there. And that hydraulic pressure goes from there through a line to your clutch slave cylinder, which again, I cannot show you on this car because this is inside the transmission. And then the piston of your clutch slave cylinder, which is gonna have a bearing where it makes contact with your pressure plate, presses down on these fingers on your pressure plate. Now that bearing at the end of your clutch slave cylinder, which presses down on these fingers on a hydraulic setup is called the clutch release bearing. But if you have an old school mechanical clutch release setup, that bearing is called a throwout bearing, which is what we have here. And the way these old school mechanical setups work is that uh, this is engaged, this throwout bearing is engaged through a fork which is attached through a cable to your clutch pedal. When you depress your clutch pedal, that fork presses down on this, which in turn presses down on the fingers of your pressure plate. And of course you need a bearing here, whether it's a throwout bearing or a clutch release bearing, because this is stationary when it engages the fingers on your pressure plate. All the while, this is gonna be turning with the crankshaft and the flywheel and all that stuff. 
All right, so here's how your pressure plate works. When these fingers are pressed in, these fingers are actually attached on the inside to the back end of the friction surface of your pressure plate. Now, I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this, but see, they're attached to the back end of the friction surface on this pressure plate. And on this setup, they're also connected by this uh, ring to this back plating here as well. So in so many words, when these fingers are pressed in, they pull on this friction surface and pull it away from your clutch disc. And then when that friction surface on your pressure plate is pulled away from your clutch disc, that creates enough space here for your clutch to disengage from the flywheel. And when that happens, your flywheel and your pressure plate, since they're bolted together, they keep spinning with the speed of your crankshaft, but your uh, clutch disc and your input shaft of your transmission, since they're disengaged from these two, they start spinning at a slower rate and start slowing down. And now with your clutch disengaged, your input shaft is not under any torque from your crankshaft, and as it slows down with the help of your synchronizers inside your uh, gearbox, now you're, you're able to change gear and line up the gears inside of your transmission. Now before I forget, there is one more component to this setup, which is called the pilot bearing. So your clutch pilot bearing sits inside of your crankshaft. So when it's seated inside of your crankshaft, this outer race moves and turns with the speed of the crankshaft. And this inner race is connected to the tip of our input shaft and it turns with the speed of our input shaft. When your clutch is engaged, everything is spinning together, so that's not a problem. But when it's disengaged, it allows for the crankshaft and your input shaft to turn at different speeds. And by the way, these springs on your clutch disc, they're there to dampen the vibration that you get from engaging and disengaging your clutch. All right, so that's how it all works, but now let's go over how you can diagnose issues with your clutch system. All right, first up, the spongy clutch pedal, which may be accompanied by not being able to put the transmission in gear with the engine running. All right, so if you have a spongy clutch pedal, then more often you have either a failing clutch master or slave cylinder or a leak in your system. So basically just get underneath there and check for leaks by where that connecting rod attaches to your clutch master cylinder through the firewall. If it's leaking, you need to replace your clutch master cylinder. Then come over to your engine bay, check for leaks by the master cylinder, then follow the line from there to your slave cylinder. Again, check for leaks. Now if your slave cylinder is inside the bell housing like it's the case on this car, sometimes there is an access a uh, cap you can remove to take a look on the inside, see whether it's leaking or not. And also don't forget, after you place any of the components, you need to add clutch fluid and make sure you bleed your clutch system. All right, so next, here's how you can tell whether your clutch is slipping or not. What you'll need to do is to get in your car, start the engine, and then apply your emergency parking brakes. And then with your foot on the brake pedal, put the car in first gear. And then suddenly and quickly let go of your clutch pedal. If your car jolts forward and your engine stalls, then you do not have a slipping clutch. But if your car does not jolt forward, maybe moves a little bit, and then also the engine just keeps on going, then that means your clutch is indeed slipping. It's not slipping on this car. So here's how this works. When you put the transmission in gear and then you apply your emergency parking brakes, and then you remove your foot from the clutch pedal, you're basically putting a very quick and extreme load through your transmission onto the crankshaft. Now, if your clutch is not slipping, then what your transmission is going to make your crankshaft do is to basically slow down quite rapidly or maybe even come close to stopping. If when that happens, your car stops, uh, your crankshaft sensor stops producing a crankshaft signal. Therefore, your car's computer stops uh, you know, working the fuel injectors. Therefore, your car stalls. Now, that's if you don't have a slipping clutch. If your clutch is slipping, when you put that immediate loan on your crankshaft, your crankshaft is going to want to keep turning. And if this is slipping, it's just going to simply slip on your flywheel against this friction surface. And you know, your engine is going to be able to spin. At the same time, you're not going to be able to get any power from your engine to your transmission. Now, as far as what could cause a bad bearing noise, like a clicking noise when you apply your clutch pedal, if you hear the noise when you're just about, when you're just starting to apply your clutch pedal, then that noise 
could usually indicate a problem with your release or throat bearing, but if you hear it all the way at the end, where you depress the clutch pedal all the way to the floor, then that could indicate a problem with your uh, pilot bearing. And that's of course when you're starting to apply your clutch pedal, that's when this makes contact with this uh, pressure plate that's spinning. If you have a bad bearing here, as this bearing is spinning, it's gonna make noise. But if you hear it when it's all the way down, your clutch pedal is all the way down to the floor, that's when your clutch disengages. And that's exactly the time where the outer race and the inner race of your pilot bearing start spinning at different speeds. And that's when, if that's when you hear the noise, then that's the problem with your uh, pilot bearing. Also, if you have a hard time putting your car in gear, or maybe you hear a grinding noise when you put it in gear, and at the same time you don't have a spongy clutch pedal, then that sometimes could be an issue with uh, your pressure plate. These fingers over time, you know, they warp and bend out of shape, and when you apply your clutch, you know, it doesn't pull back enough on this uh, friction surface, therefore it does not allow for a proper clutch release. Now one way to see whether that's your problem is to get a feeler gauge between your clutch disc and your pressure plate when the clutch pedal is applied and see if that uh, clearance meets the specification for your car's make and model. Of course, a lot of times you're gonna have to remove the transmission to do that. But if you're lucky on some cars, there's a, an access hole that allows for you to do that without removing the transmission. Now, before you go, do me a favor and share this video on your favorite social network. And also consider checking out these other related videos, of which I put links to on this side of the screen that you can click on. There will also be links in the description box down below as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.